Some more filmic analysis. So let's jump to about 20 years in the timeline and we get a similar product that resembles Egoyans, another film that revolves around the Armenian diasporic identity and its negotiations, but this time another layer is added to it. The layer of gender identity, an imperative sociocultural discourse that has reached its peak during the 21st century. More on this later. So how does Haidari's Apricot Groves deal with the intersections of gender identity, cultural identity, and the Armenian diasporic identity? I'll look into the cinematography, medium shot, internally focalized objective shot, and camera movement, editing, narrative structure, and mise-en-scene, clothing and objects, to elucidate how the film presents the aforementioned topic. So, some context. The film explores the homecoming journey of an Iranian-Armenian young adult named Aram, played by Narve Vartan. Adam lives in the USA and travels to Armenia for one day in order to ask the father of his childhood sweetheart if he could marry her. He then travels across the border into Iran to undergo gender reassignment surgery, changing his sex from male to female. The film documents Adam and his brother's journey to and across the homeland and metaphorically his journey to change his gender. It is important to note that the film was meant to be screened at the 14th Golden Apricot Film Festival in Yerevan, Armenia. However, a couple of days before the start of the festival, the board of the festival cancelled the screenings for the film due to its LGBTQ subject matter. The sociopolitical context is important as it helps understand the institutional discrimination that is present in Armenia, and it helps to seize what these films are trying to achieve with their subject matter. They are essentially disclosing the hegemonic discourses that take place within the Armenian traditional society, which thus deem it as constructed narratives. The film's transgressive narrative thus becomes a means to problematize the hegemonic discourse through representation and narrativizing. The film deals with a diasporic subject who is inherently in between these realms of gender and ethnic identity, which is constituted as the queer diasporic subject that, as Daniel Berghan puts it, functions as a master trope of hybridity. During his one-day stay in Armenia, Adam oscillates between being more feminine to more masculine, from sticking to Armenian traditions to eschewing them. He arrives in Armenia while his brother, Vartan, played by Pedro Mansari, who is also Iranian-Armenian but lives in Armenia, is waiting for him in the airport arrival hall. While Vartan is waiting, he drinks two double espressos and a double jack. The waiting scene is cross-cutted with scenes of Adam's arrival. However, Adam's face is never shown. Haidari always films him from behind his head. There is thus some eerie tension that is present within the whole scene, from Vartan's worrying and his anxious glances in the arrivals hall, to Haidari's stale and bland shots of the airport hall. The homecoming journey is not festive and celebratory at all, but concerning and aloof, and as Nafisi puts it with regards to the homecoming journey, return is not always voluntary or desired. Adam's homecoming journey is not for cultural enlightenment and the reinstatement of meaning much like arsene and calendar, but to achieve a practical goal, asking his high school sweetheart's father for her hand and reassigning his gender. Haidari thus employs a spatial sense of anxiety and discomfort through the cinematography and Vartan's acting to signify that the homeland can indeed be an uncomfortable space to traverse if you are not fully accepted there. Unlike Vartan, who represents the more nativist Armenian, Adam is more resistant to cultural traditions. This is why he has to perform, in order to penetrate the social, cultural, and familial spheres. He needs to engage in specific cultural acts to be accepted. He performs a specific aspect of the Armenian identity, namely the heteronormative traditional Armenian male. When Vartan helps Adam get ready for the marriage proposal, they go to a number of places that are marked by cultural tradition and male patriarchal power. Adam first cuts his long hair so it can look more appropriate and masculine. When the barber stops cutting his hair at some point, Adam tells him to cut it shorter, attempting to have a similar haircut to his more socially accepted brother. Haidari then, after the haircut is finished, captures both of the brothers in one frame through a medium shot via a mirror. This is the point when the viewer gets to see the finality of Adam's hair and his face. Haidari thus juxtaposes the appearances of both brothers by revealing Adam's final haircut with the medium shot. Both are mirror to each other. Adam has now become groomed, not only for his marriage proposal, but also for social acceptance and inclusion. Whatever is thus deemed as masculine within that society, the Armenian society, needs to be appropriated by Adam, which is predicated off of how behaviors constitute the gender and culture itself. He thus undergoes these cultural changes in order to perform and act like something he doesn't feel like he's not. It is not that Adam is acting as a male in order to assert and accentuate on what is deemed as masculine, but he is doing so to be accepted by the family. This form of mimicry by Adam should not be necessarily be understood as one that conforms to, regulates, and perpetuates the system of the hegemonic ideology, nor should it be understood as a masquerade that attempts to be subversive and critical. Adam should be understood as an ambivalent character that lies in between the liminal space of conforming on the one hand and subverting on the other. He does fall into the category of the heterosexual male through appearance and mimicry of the original, his brother, but he also does not fall into it due to his shifting gender and ethnic identity. Note that mimicry, as Nafisi writes, involves the kind of over-imitation or under-imitation of the other that in its surplus or deficit, and in its irony, produces partially of identity, where there's a slippage between the original and its copy. 
Imitation, on the other hand, is when the original and the copy match. Through Adam's apprehensive demeanor when he meets his future wife's father, he under-imitates his brother's actions, who is much more flamboyant. He thus produces a deficit and a lack in relation to his brother's character, which marks Adam as subversive. But at the same time, he's conforming to his brother's physical looks, which marks him as conforming to the status quo. This is why he is neither nor, primarily because he negotiates aspects of different identities and appropriates traces of their significations. He thus falls into a space that presents the collaboration of both features, where on the outside, he's the traditional groom male, and from the inside, he occupies another position, that of a woman. Therefore, he encompasses a certain two-ness, which is negotiated through performance, for as Nafisi puts it, performative strategies are dependent on two-ness. This is exemplified when Adam, during the same sequence, shares a lengthy, ambiguous stare with a young girl who's playing with a bunch of boys, which is presented through internally focalized objective shots. Haidari chooses to close up on the girl's face and not any of the boys. Hence, Adam's gaze is one where he derives pleasure from, one where she becomes his object of desire. Not pleasure in a pedophilic and sexual sense, but in the sense that she is a character that Adam identifies with. Adam desires the girl's gender as if he is almost envious of it. He ponders and imagines about what it might be like to grow up as his desired gender in his homeland, which is as pure and desired as it can get for Adam. After the haircut scene, Vartan and his brother stop at various places to get the objects they need for the traditional marriage proposal. While in the car, on their way to the future bride's house, Vartan tells Adam about the traditional significance of these objects that they have just bought. Vartan then asks his brother if he finds these Armenian traditions interesting, and Adam doesn't answer and looks away all the while remaining silent. This is not the only instance that Adam remains ambiguous and aloof towards the space and people around him. As he climbs up the staircase to enter the bride's house, he's reluctant and hesitant to enter the private domestic sphere of the family, where traditions are upheld and kept. The counter's excessive focus on Adam emphasizes his looseness to these Armenian rituals as he does not know how to traverse these spaces. The camera sticks to him, just like how he is stuck in a bitter, ambivalent space. Haidari slowly tracks Adam from the back through a middle shot as he walks into the household. The pace of the camera is similar to that of Adam's, both slow, ominous, and full of tension. Haidari makes his collocation between the two entities, the camera and Adam, to portray the psyche of Adam, as he does not say much concerning his whole experience. The camera thus does the talking for him, along with his glances. Much is thus implied through the camera work in Haidari's film, as exemplified with the somewhat shaky tracking shot of Adam as he enters the household, which represents the tension that he feels and the tension he brings into the household. Taking all of this into consideration, Adam thus sees the homeland as a threat to his identity, rather than a reinforcer of it, and remaining implicitly distant and hesitant to engage in traditions is the only way he can protect himself. However, he does still engage in these traditions through masquerade, but only to achieve a certain ends to get accepted by the bride's father into marrying her. Here, Adam's tunis is evident. He is in between individuality and collectivity in terms of his gender identity and national identity. His character is one that constantly negotiates between the two, between his individual construction of identity which is permitted through the neoliberal and postmodern ways of thought that have dominated the West, and traditional narratives that dominate nationhood and originality. These are primarily the two binaries, individuality and collectivity, which Adam plays with, and through his double position, he opens up new spaces of signification and identity construction. Vis-a-vis -vis Edward Soya, negotiations between binaries are a creative process of restructuring that draws selectively and strategically from the two opposing categories to open up new alternatives. It is through this interstitial space which Ada manifests new spaces of Armenianness and relating to the homeland. By bringing an ambivalent character and the diasporic condition of fragmentation to the fore, Haidari questions these traditional narratives that institutionally govern a nation. Adam is within the realm of mimicry throughout the film, whether through traces of gender identity or ethnic identity. However, at the end of the film, when he is seen with a hijab at the Iranian border patrol, Adam imitates women in Iran. He produces a whole identical subject. Putting on the hijab is thus not a form of masquerade and mimicry, but an assertion of his newly found identity. This is exemplified when Haidadi inserts an internally focused objective shot when Adam is on his bed in the hospital. Adam and the viewer are staring at the roof, where there is a flickering fluorescent light. This flickering is also present at the Iran and Border Patrol in the previous scene, where Haidadi also inserts an internally focused objective shot from Adam's perspective. The flickering light marks the editing transition from the Iran and Border Patrol to the hospital. This flickering light comes to a halt and fully turns on once Adam is in the hospital, which signifies identity enlightenment. It resonates with this troubled and ambivalent identity, where aspects come and go continuously in the spotlight. The light with maximum intensity signifies Adam's ultimate fulfillment right before he goes into surgery. However, Adam's future identity is left in speculation. Will he possess ambivalence after his gender reassignment surgery? Has his identity become static? Has Iran become his homeland as he can fulfill his desire there? Moreover, 
Adam might be searching for stability in his identity, which can be a reason why he undergoes a gender reassignment surgery. All these speculative questions and thoughts mark the end of a new beginning for Adam. This ambiguity also resonates with the reflexive nature of the film as it remains open-ended and with the Armenian diasporic identity in general. Just like many other diasporic subjects, the process of becoming is always in flux as originality doesn't exist, just hybrids, as Paul states. Cultural identity is a matter of becoming as well as of being. It belongs to the future as much as to the past. Apricot Groves accentuates on the notion that the diasporic identity is not merely within the confines of ethnicity and nationality, but also extends onto gender. This extension suggests the fluidity of identity. Judith Butler states that gender intersects with racial, class, ethnic, sexual, and regional modalities of discursively constituted identities. As a result, it becomes impossible to separate out gender from the political and cultural intersections in which it is invariably produced and maintained. Acts of masculinity, as manifested with Adam's character, are therefore inscribed within Armenianness. Masculinity and Armenian culture are highly intersected. Haidari discloses this mechanism by inserting a tangential character, that is to say, one that doesn't fully adhere to the Armenian masculinist conventions. It is through Adam's strangeness in which the whole system becomes deemed as such as well. Therefore, the film demonstrates the uncanniness of gender conventions that dominate Armenian masculinity, which regulate the normative order. The construction of gender is unveiled. In line with this discourse, the realistic homeland, Armenia, that Adam experiences becomes a highly gendered and masculine space, and that is why he struggles to culturally connect. Taking this even further, Adam's character is one that stands for the grotesque in terms of how he poses a threat and transgresses the normative order. He represents the ultimate underside of the Armenian identity, as he partially identifies with three cultural spaces, which destabilizes the concept of a national identity, and he changes his gender, which is a threat to the patriarchal order and power as he literally removes the phallus. Understood vis-a-vis -vis Peter Staley Brass and Alan White's implications of the grotesque and the social order, Adam's character unveils what is repressed and what doesn't fit within the normative sociopolitical discourse. Therefore, the film's message conveys that one does not have to be an assertive patriarchal male to be classified as an Armenian or Iranian, but one can also identify with a different gender and be Armenian or Iranian as well. Hence, the film makes a distinction between the two and by doing so, dismantles binaries that dominate the country. Additionally, Adam's doubly marginalized position not only challenges the nation, but also traditional familial values. As Berkhan notes, queer desire challenges fantasies of racial and cultural homogeneity, ethnic absolutism, and heteronormativity. As exemplified in the previous episode, the unaccommodating feeling from the homeland is also evident with the photographer's character in Egoyan's calendar. Both films problematize these boundaries and offer escape routes about what else an Armenian diasporic subject can be in a postmodern globalized world, showcasing the current status of the many Western Armenian diasporians. It is due to the individualist agency of the postmodern diasporic subject in which the characters can create the homeland as they please. As Jonathan Rutherford states, the structures of feeling enables us to move beyond some discrete linguistic realm. which is related to the notion of thinking of binaries, and so fully address subjectivity and the making of identity. Haidari and Egoyan, through their exploration of characters that have troubles constructing their identity, thus understand the complex negotiations and articulations that take place within the confines of identity construction. By representing these diverse Armenian diasporians and by articulating differences between them, you do not succumb to a single representation, disavowing the universalization of the Armenian diasporic identity. They do not create abstract and ideal subjects, but ones that acknowledge their own being. The sign of Armenianness is thus no longer fixed, as these films give rise to new meanings by challenging the rigid structures of identity signification. These films assert that Armenian diasporic cinema allows the homeland and the memories and spaces affiliated with Armenianness to be somewhat tangible, thereby nurturing the Armenian diasporic identity, but it can also do the opposite. Armenian diasporic film is occupied with questions of how to identify to the homeland and one's Armenianness and maintaining that and merging this with other identities that the Armenian diasporic subject might possess. It is interested in showcasing a locale that is eternal, magical, and mystical, such as open spaces of churches, groves, etc., and closed spaces, spaces that cannot mingle with Armenianness. These are the contradictions present within both films. In terms of development, more issues of identity are coming to the fore. Not only cultural identity, but also gender identity is being questioned and filmically represented. In other words, neoliberal and capitalist modes of identity construction and belonging have been intermingled with Armenian nationalist identity politics, which in turn can actually alter discourses within Armenia itself. These are the contradictions within Armenian diasporic cinema that shine light onto the sociopolitical realm.